Hiya and welcome to Big Fluffy Ducks eBay channel. Now today we're going to be looking at how to list something on eBay. So eBay may seem like a scary place but it's quite easy really. If I can do anybody can. So once you've set up yourself account you'll have to have to create yourself an account um, it's also best if you get yourself a PayPal account although there is extra charges on that but discuss that later on so this is your main page when you log in it takes you to your this is shows you things that are available on the main screen now I'm going to show you how to list just a CD. So let's get on with it. So if you just go just there, just go hit the cell. So get this up. This this that shows that I've already listed some CDs already. Um, it puts you in there in case you want to um, complete them and do a, a draft which I've already put them on so I'm not sure why they're there but anyhow on this box here tell us what you're selling so just write in a short description or on a CD it's quite handy because you can just put in the barcode and it should find hopefully you can see it's just Displaying them all down at the minute. If I click on there, there you go. Yeah, Danny Minogue and the on lights. So you you can click and they are. So it sure gives you the details. You can match it up. It'll do this on CDs, books, games, anything with a barcode. Basically, you can put it in, see if it recognizes. If it doesn't then you'll just have to list it but this basically just click use this product and there you are um, if it doesn't find the item then basically you just have to ignore it and there's a button at the bottom that says continue listing without searching so to click on that and it'll take you to this screen again you see up the top here has this information. If anything's wrong, you don't have to use their information. It's just what eBay has on record for that barcode. You can take the tick out of there if you don't want to use the information. It puts it in here. I just like to change it about a bit um, because, as you can see, it doesn't actually tell you that it's a CD. Um, I'll have a look if it's an enhanced one. Oh, yes, it is actually. So you can write a little bit more in there if you want to This one has actually got music videos I'm just gonna just put that in capitals uh, Ah There you go. Right, you need to make the title as good as, as you can see there I've got 15 characters. You've got to make it as good as you can. So that's what's going to catch people. Whatever you've written in there. And it's also your search words as well. So whatever you can get in that box, it's best to do. There you are. It's given me some specifics. It thinks it was 2003. Yeah, if I look on here, yeah, it's 2003 condition now this is actually quite good but if I look at it it has got some slight scratches on slight marks so I'm gonna put that as as good and un underneath there's a box that opens up and you can just explain I usually try to put this in capitals um, I usually just put light marks and scratches now if there was something say you were selling a cardigan and it had a little bit slight mark on it you could explain a little black mark on the shoulder or something or you know you need to go into detail so that they know 
when they buy it that's exactly what they're getting and you know to stop people wanting to return it to you so next thing is add your photos so you should have not doing that um, I don't know why you'd want to thingy that and not open it up there. Let me try that again. Open it up. Bear with me one moment because it's being awkward. Normally I have these all in single. Right. So just add in some pictures. Find out where you've saved them. You just click all along and it'll put in your pictures. So you best sit and take some photos beforehand to upload them to your computer or whatever you're using. Um, I just put them in a folder. I just take it on a normal compact camera and upload it off a try. You can take it on your phone. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got a good quality picture. There you go, see, they've uploaded. There you are. Light a bit on that picture. And then just make it sit down. You've you've got to, you can use 12 pictures. Anything after that you get told off. Um I think they charge after that if you wanted to put loads of pictures on. But I keep it within them boxes there. If you go down See, it's telling me it's a music label enhanced. This is where you can fill in a bit more specific. They've already filled in some bits. Um, basically, I want to put it's pop. Um, if you can put as much information as you can, the better because that's what helps people find your item. Um, it's an album. Record label is actually London Records. So if you start to type in, it will find usually. Um, this here you can put on whether it's you know special edition because people are, love special editions, anything that's got extra bits on. So what I'm going to put in here, oh. Well, I suppose I don't need to because it already says enhanced down there, special attribute. So that's fine, really. Custom bundle, no. Custom bundle means is, um, you know, it's something extra. So if you've added two things together in your bundle, it's not, you know, if it wasn't just one CD you were getting, if you were like putting two together that would normally go together, you, you know, say yes. Um, English. Manufacturing, you never know where. Oh, it actually says it's made in Germany. So there you go, makes a change. Um, modify, no. They've just started, they've just put this section here onto, onto CDs, which is quite good. So it's a standard. So you can actually put on whether it's one of the slimline ones or just the plastic one. So it's quite that's quite good because I used to have I used to write that in the bottom. So um, you can add custom. Click on there, make add extra bits on if you really want to. Now what I do, this here is where you need to write a description. Some people only write a couple of words, write an essay. What I do is go back up to my title, copy and there. Copy it, go down to here, paste it, just to make it look nice. You know, I am I'm a secretary, so I've, I like to have things looking quite nice. So all I would write in here, um, this is a CD. Um, how many tracks does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven. Fourteen tracks and three. Fourteen tracks and three. 
videos. That play in P that play in play on now. <coughs> I'm writing on there that Okay, is that misleading? 40 music tracks and free, maybe put um, videos. That's better, isn't it? That's better. That makes it sense. So 40 music tracks and free videos. Videos play on your PC. So the people aren't expecting it to be a DVD. And they don't think they're going to put in. Where sometimes you get a DVD included in your CD. Mitt wrote it down. If you were selling some clothes, you would... Um, Put a description on, say that you've got, um, you know, where the zip is, if there's any pockets, you know, ex you've got to explain it to someone that can't see the item. That's how I think of it. So I usually on a CD, I usually just put that it includes includes tracks, and then I look for the ones that I actually know. Uh, the famous ones. If it's an artist I don't particularly know, then I'll just pick three off the track listing. Um, if you want to do your research on no, I can't spell, on something like this. You could actually, you know, go to like the likes of Amazon, your music site, or just Google. You could Google the CD and get all the information off it and copy and paste that into it. But that's probably a bit plagiarism. But you could, if you, or you could sit and write out every track that's on it if you really want to give the person loads of information. Or you could just say, you know, 14 tracks. It's completely up to you how much information you give. Some people just write a line in here. You know, I'm trying to hopefully sell it to people. So I think that really you need to put a little bit in, even if it's just a few sentences, just, you know, so people know what you're actually selling. So now I would go in here where it says what condition, what you've written in there. I usually just pop it at the bottom of my little description. Um, in the bottom. I'm going to put in here videos are um, actually um, it's actually all those three songs that I've just put, so I could just put that there. And so it's got the date up there, so that should be all right, but I'd also put the year in. So now what I'm going to do, so that's your basic editing. You can do this HTML, uh, that's doing all your web bits. I can't get too complicated with that. So if you go over to this advanced editing, that puts all your fonts and little bits up so you can number things, put it in bold, change your change your writing. There's not much. I usually leave it as Arial because it's a nice looking one. But I usually do put it up bigger. So I put that up to 18. My title, I usually put that to 24. Bold it, underline it, and I usually put it in a nice colour. I'll put this in blue. And I just play about with it to make it look nicer. There you go. Um, there we go. It does actually tell you you've got to watch some of this stuff now because it there. See on this side it says mobile friendly checker because a lot of people go on their apps to look at eBay now. They've got it on there, so if you you can click on that and it will tell you. Great job. See there, it doesn't think there's any problem. It's not showing up. Usually it shows up on there. 
saying everything's fine. But normally that would it brings up a little picture on there. It's just to show you how it would look on a mobile so you can change it about if it looks rubbish. Um, I usually do my listing on my PC just because I find it easier with the mouse with uploading photos but you can do it on the app as well on your mobile which you would have your photos and things all already on but it just I prefer my PC the app is is good but some little things you can't do as well on it so I prefer to go on my computer so now we're on to the important part which is the details you set what you want it so this is on fixed price at the moment format it's on fixed price that is how much you're selling it as that's a fixed price so you could put two pound it would be sold as that um, and then you, and you can put a buy it now price you you know you can change it about you can um, basically where is it on here best offer so you can put in so people can still offer you if you put a fixed price on it but you will ultimately probably just get whatever you put in there not much negotiation really some people will but at the start if it's a new item I'm listing I prefer to put it on as auction auction style here we go uh, and that means I put a basic price in and it can make anything from that price above again you can put best offers on so people can offer on it so let's do that in a minute but your fixed price here is good till cancelled so basically um, they used to have it where you could have it on for 30 days and then it would drop off but now they've just done it so it's good till cancelled um, and it keeps renewing and if it sells then you would be charged a fee but it's free for it to keep renewing every month which is good if you've got something that you like that won't sell but you're trying to get a certain price for something um, but sometimes it's not the best because you know it's on constantly you have to go in if it, you've got a fixed price um, item on you have to go in and actually cancel it yourself to stop it if you know you're sick of it uploading so auction style this is what we're going to do so what I usually at first I usually put a CD or whatever I'm listing I usually have it on for the week at what price I want and then after that week I then decide whether I'm going to relist it again but at like a lower price which most of the time I usually only put it on at like 99 pence or something so it's not much point of loan it and then I'll put it to, if it doesn't sell out in the week at the lower price I then send, put it on um, onto the fixed price for hopefully about a month or so and if it still doesn't sell after that then I usually just um, get rid of them um, any items that I don't sell so such as um, CDs, books, DVDs, things like that um, there's various websites that you can actually send them to such as Magpie, um, Monomox, um, different ones um, you've got to watch because they're, they're, they're coming through all the time some of them and um, they come and go pretty quick really but there's a few that I do use um, I'll list them and send them to them but you don't get that much money on these sites um, you'll get a matter of for a CD you'll get probably up to 30 pence 30 pence for a basic CD 30 pence is usually the maximum same with DVDs unless you've got something that's rare that they want I mean, half the time you usually only get a pound for something like that you get excited when you list on these sites and you get a pound for your CD and you've got to watch on things like Music Magpie because you've got to have you've got to send them 
some of the sites you've got to send them like 10 items and above some sites you've got to send them a minimum of 10 pounds worth which is a lot when you're actually have a if you've got a cd that you're only getting say five pence for you know it's a quite a lot of cds that you need to make up to 10 pound so they're not the best but if you've got things that you can't sell and can't get rid of i would suggest to try them out and see if you can actually get them sold that way if you've got a massive collection you don't want to put them on ebay then it's a good way to get rid of cds and things um if i can't do it that way then basically i just put them in a charity bag and i'll take them to the charity shop i don't like to bin anything i don't want to just put them in my bin and let it go to landfill if i can't get rid of them an easy way then i basically will put them in one of the charity bags that you get around your door or you know what you take them to the charity shops um same with clothes you do get your cash for clothes they'll take clothes off your hands um but i'd usually just put them in a charity bag um so let's carry on here so i'm going to put on here 99 pence best way for a cd you're probably not going to make much more than a lot of them and that is just a starting price it will go up and up if it's a one that people want or it won't do well. and on here what i've started to do is letting people make an offer so i'm going to put in the offers accept so basically all it means is that ebay will send them will sell it for you if you put so i'm going to put say three pound in there anybody makes an offer on that over three pound the cd will get sold um you've got off automatic decline offers lower than so if you don't want to sell something for well it would be lower than 99p here i would have to put on you know anything under 50 pence or something but if you were selling something for say four pound and you didn't want it to go for a pound you'd have put a pound in there and it wouldn't let wouldn't sell it for that but i usually just don't bother with that box i usually put it offers at least if you go down quantity is one you can sell as a lot you can allow buyers to remain an honest or rebuild. I don't usually think that. I think if they're on, they're fine. Um, donation. I make a donation. You can make do a donation. Now, you have to have... It takes you to a separate site. You choose which charity you want it to go to. Um, and you can choose what percentage. You can have 5%, 10%, 50 100 if you want to. Um, but again, there is fees and all the rest of it. You know, you've got to remember that if you're putting a charity on, you know, if your CD only goes for a pound and you've put 50%, you're not going to make much out of it yourself because half the money will go into charity, which is good. But then you've also got your eBay fees and PayPal fees to pay. So you probably would end up out of pot of pocket. See, so you've got to make your, do your calculations. Um, payment options there you go I've got PayPal and I've also got its personal check and credit card um, you can do all these different ones if you want to um, it's completely so PayPal you need to have a PayPal account it's the best way and the easiest way to pay on eBay but you've got to remember when you sell and by when you sell you get there's a percentage taken off there's a paypal fee again it just says there's an ebay fee there's a paypal fee so you've got to allow that so if you're just selling something as i say for 99p you're not going to make too much on it because you do get charges so you can't know it's 10 percent something like that which is add up basically PayPal, they take their fee as the transaction goes through. eBay charge you an invoice every month. So you get a little, invo in, little um, inbox every month to say that you, what, what your fee is, what they're charging you for your eBay account. And you can either pay it as you go or you have it thing to your PayPal account and it will charge you that way. Um, as we go down... I've had this little thing in here for ages 
just additional um, just to say worldwide I will it's only PayPal only you want to check um, and just to say that postage are estimates so we go down returns that's your return 14 days you've got to watch because a lot of people like you to pay for the postage but if you've got it in there then that should be a no that's you know just what you choose if we go down um whether you accept them from internationally or not that's a different that's it. i probably wouldn't so and then you can automatically relist relist an item eight times if it doesn't sell and you get fees for each relist i don't do that because i like to be in control but you can if you have the time to sit and relist it every week so delivery details now things like cds dvds games small books can all go as large letter rate through the raw mail um, bigger things have to go as small parcels via the raw mail so what basically go to raw mail website see what they what the prices are so um, I can't say it. So it, what I suggest really, you need to work out how much an item is, because it's not. It's by size and weight now here in the UK. Can't say for people abroad, but size and weight. So I usually for small. I usually do a couple of all mail items. I options which you can just put in the post box or take the post office and then I'll do a courier option really usually usually Hermes or DBD you know and it's a matter of go, going to their website and checking out their prices um, also go to parcels to go they do all the different services so you could put in a quote of your weight and size and see what they give you for all the different services so at the moment this is a CD currently because of the world situation I'm just offering first and second class because I'm just putting these in the post box I'm not taking them to the post office because currently it's not really allowed I'm using my daily exercise going to the post box I don't do it all the time, but if I need to go to the post box, that's what I do. I include it in my daily exercise. So there we go. This is so dispatch time. I have it as five, but you can change it. You can have whatever. I wouldn't suggest 30 days unless you're abroad, but you have it anywhere there. That's just the time that you're allowing yourself to get it. Basically, when it, from when it sells, um, it just notifies the buyer that you know they're to expect it by a certain date. That's all eBay does with that. Um, you've got five. I do it as five working days, just to allow, just in case I can't get to the post box or whatever something happens, gives me that little bit of play time. Um, combine PMP discounts. You can give people discounts. Um, that just takes you to another screen that lets you add a rule on. So if someone buys, you know five cds they get 10 percent off or something like that you can same with the postage rule you can do it as a combined postage which i just do that normally anyhow but if someone buys a couple of cds i wouldn't charge them normally ebay sends them an invoice and would double it i usually just send a one back that i'll oh, half the postage i'll do it for what it is um international postage so if you tick that box basically it will appear on international ebay sites across the globe so someone from india or america can go in and see your items which is quite good because it means you can sell it further afield um, if you tick this box basically 
eBay will do the whole packaging. So basically what you do is when it sells, you get an address to send it to. So you send it to like a shipping center and then eBay charges the buyer another lot of postage. So it's probably quite expensive for the actual buyer in the long run because they pay, they get your postage and their actual, the postage that eBay add on to pay for. So it would be expensive, but people may think it's worth it for the item. So basically I send it, you send it to a shipping center, eBay takes care of it. Um, You've got to watch because you can't really do as much stuff on that. You can't really respond to the person. eBay does it all for you, which takes out the hassle of taking it to the post office and putting on your international postage. You can do that or you can put on, you can set the, set the postage yourself and do it yourself. That's what you do in that box. I to click on that there. There, you can click there exactly how much which ones you post to and what kind of the postage is. I used to do all that, but now I usually just do it and let it go for the global program. At the moment, I'm not due to the fact of, you know, this is the epidemic at the moment. I'm recording this. So at the moment, I'm not doing international postage. So keep going down. Package weight and dimensions. So for here, for the UK, um, Basically, a CD is a large envelope. It's thicker than a letter. You just choose which option. You can measure it all out if you want to, but I don't want to. Um, weight for my CD is 101 to 250. It's usually just over 100 grams. Um, CD singles are usually under 100, uh, which would just be a stamp for selling them. And DVDs are over 100. And then you get your bigger parcels that you would have to send get a courier for but I just select that it tells you on here if you want to exclude locations and then it lets you change where you are based and then you can promote them I never bother with any of this you can promote them they um, will charge you again to um, promote it so it's where they put it at the top of the page and you know flash it on and you know when you um go to Facebook and things like that and you see little adverts and things that's where you can you know you promote it on things like that just go through there um if you're doing a fixed price then basically you can make it a multi-buy offer and I really bother because I don't have two items of a thing that's more for if you're in a, a big shop you know selling things by bulk so there you go you can basically I usually just list straight off because I usually know that I've just done it all the way I want it you can preview it it'll show you exactly what it's going to look like on the screen you know double check your, your photos are okay oh, usually it lets you go through them but they're there you know make sure See, that's hunched it up a little bit. It doesn't usually do that. Um, you can save as a draft if suddenly something happens and you want to continue later. You just can say, basically, list with displayed fees. So if you read the little bit there, you click on all that, it tells you. So basically, they charge you a fee if that sells. Um, if you want to, you can go into their um, listings. You can go into the listings and find out exactly how much the fees are that they're charging you. Um, if you look at it, so you can just finish that. And there you are, it's listed, it's there. I've got 22 on now. There you are. So that will be on for seven days. You'll be able to see who's viewed it, who's watched it, and if there's any bids. If there's a bid at the end of it, it will get sold and you've earned some money. So, but that'll be on the next video.
Okay, so for now, I'm going to leave you at that. Hopefully that's a little bit of information to digest and for you to take note. So look forward and stay safe. See you in the next video. Bye.